we will begin the webinar on collision diagnostic tools, comparisons, and the launch scan tool. I'm Melissa Joles with RDA Impact, and Sandy Campbell, Diagnostic and Tool Specialist for Medco, is your presenter today. The presentation will take approximately 45 minutes, and we are recording it, and we'll post it on our YouTube channel. If you have questions during the webinar, you can type those in the chat box at the bottom right of your screen, and Sandy can answer those during the presentation. Now, I'm going to turn it over to Sandy. Well, good afternoon. I want to thank you first uh, for having us on board. Uh, discussion today is going to be on the launch product. Um, now, what I'm going to do here first uh, is kind of fill you in on why we picked launch uh, as probably the best pick for the collision folks. Uh, first of which, it is the really the latest in hardware. Uh, all three of their full-blown machines, their Pro Series machines, are all Droid operating systems, or actual Droid tablets, uh, which is really a great pick for a uh, scan tool uh, with today's technology. And one of the other reasons why we picked uh, Launch specifically, because they're not, they're not the only ones that have come out with uh, Android products here. Uh, they have Autel stuff that now is all Droid. Uh, all of Bosch OTC is Droid. But the reason we picked this platform, or one of the reasons, uh, is the fact that it is an open Android platform. And by that, I mean it has Google Play, which allows you to drop any third party app onto the tool. Uh, that's available in Google Play. Now, most importantly, probably, and we'll have a discussion in a moment relative to uh, pre and post uh, inspections for insurance, uh, you have to be able to have a hard copy of that. And most of the Android tools that are out there do not have Google Play, so you can't drop additional apps onto the tool such as a printer app. So if you're able to drop a printer app onto the tool, uh, either right after you've done the report, or the next hour, or a day, or a week, or whenever you choose, you can pop that report back up, and you can print it right from the tool via uh, Wi-Fi. Um, your other option, uh, also, uh, you can also email out of the tool. So if you wanted to email your reports to yourself, uh, it's a really a simple process of opening a uh, Google account and getting a new uh, Gmail account. Enter that into the tool, and you can email anything that comes up on the screen to any place you want. So that's... Uh, uh, that's really a huge advantage, especially where more and more companies, information companies, that sort of thing, uh, are really coming out with uh, apps that are very helpful in a lot of regards. The other area that we thought was really important, to more so I thought was important, was the width of application. And by that, I mean the number of vehicle families that it works on. Uh, you know, most of the tools that have been out there for a number of years, they work quite well on your domestic products, uh, a pretty fair job on the Asian uh, sector. But when you start getting into the Europeans, uh, most of them have fallen pretty short. Uh, one of the reasons, again, that we picked this uh, was really the width of application in, especially in your smaller vehicle groups, your Volvos or uh, Jaguars or Land Rovers or, or uh, even a Rolls Royce or a Maserati. Um, all of these companies in Europe, for the most part, hold all their top secrets to themselves. Uh, so unless you have a reverse engineer platform in place to build this tool, you really fall short because these companies are uh, very shy about uh, uh, about selling uh, data complexes and uh, you know controls and that sort of thing, and that's the things you really need. So in this case, they've really done an excellent job 
uh, relative to not only the number of vehicle families that it works with, but what it actually does within those vehicles. In addition to which, uh, now as I just mentioned, this is a reverse engineered tool. Uh, honestly, that's what the world is going to at this point. Um, because of that, their update process is uh, unlike in the past where you would update a tool once a year or you would update it once every six months. This is done as soon as an engineering task is done. It's posted online, and as long as your subscription is active, you have that available for download into your tool. The plus to that is, as functionality is done, it's right there for the taking. So that's a, a really a plus in that now, for example, uh, some of the tools that are out there, and I won't discuss the name, but a lot of their smaller vehicle groups like the Europeans or even some of the Asians like Subaru and so forth, uh, their range in terms of year application only goes up around your uh, 2014, 2015 range. And that in the general repair industry is probably okay, uh, but in the collision industry, you could have a brand new car come rolling through the door that's two days old, uh, and you're not gonna turn that away. So certainly uh, you need to be as far forward as is possible. I can tell you with this particular tool, the majority of the manufacturers that are in there uh, are up through 17 at this point. And I would suspect over the course of the next three to four months that even some of the 18s may be starting to drop in. Uh, update is all done online, so you do need uh, Wi-Fi uh, application and it has to be Wi-Fi. There's no way to connect uh, at least two of these tools to the Ethernet. So you do need Wi-Fi for your updating process. So the year range, again, most of which is up through 2017. Um, and again, it's a constant update. You can check it every day if you want. And I do my demo tools probably on average every couple of weeks. Uh, and there's always multiple updates. So uh, let's talk about why uh, beyond the diagnostic side, uh, what has really sparked this in the past uh, nine months to a year uh, is the insurance companies uh, seem to be willing to pay uh, for pre and post inspections on certain um, vehicle manufacturers that are requiring it, it be done. Uh, current list I have in front of me is GM, Toyota, Honda, Nissan, Mercedes, uh, FCA, which is your Fiat Chrysler Group. Uh, all of that is requiring, not recommending, but requiring. So uh, you have the opportunity uh, with this tool to easily do these uh, uh, pre and post inspections. Now, again, they do want a hard copy, so having the ability to print or and or email uh, is uh, really important to, for ease rather than, you know, taking a picture of a screen with your phone and transferring it to your email. You don't have to go through any of that. This Droid tablet uh, really formats all, all very nicely for you. Now, just a bit about the hardware. Again, it is a Droid tablet. Uh, they have three uh, tablets available. Uh, the one that we have chosen to spearhead with uh, is called an X431 uh, PBE. Uh, now, that is our own number. It is bearing in mind with all three of these hardwares, the application software is exactly the same. There's no difference in the application at all. The difference Andy? is in. Yes, sir, ma'am. I, ha I have a question. I have a question for you from somebody. Um, yeah? They were asking, where can we get that list of OEs uh, that are requiring, requiring the pre and post scans? Uh, if we send it to you, can you send it to them? Yes. Yes. Perfect. 
That's what we'll do. Okay. I'll send it to everybody. All right. on the call. Great. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Now, uh, there is three hardwares. Uh, the first of which, as I said, is the X431 PBE. Now, that is an eight inch uh, screen uh, on that tablet. Um, <clears throat> again, uh, needs to be Wi Fi for your updating purposes, which this is. And then we have the same machine in a 10 inch screen, which is a, obviously a little larger machine uh, and a larger screen. Uh, in terms of the application, again, it's the same. Uh, your RAM is the same in the machine. Your hard drive space in the machine is the same. Uh, here's where the difference is. On the first one, the eight inch, the X431 PBE, we have put a deal together with Launch as a distributor where that machine comes uh, up front with two years of update. The other two machines will come with one year of update. Uh, it's just a promotional deal. We thought this machine would probably fit the best for most folks. Uh, so that comes with two years of update. The next one up was an X431 Pro 3, it's called. Uh, again, that is the 10-inch screen. Looks, smells, and tastes the same. It's just bigger, and it does exactly the same thing. And I will admit there are folks that do like the bigger screen, when, especially when you're an old goat like me. <laughs> Forget your glasses. The big, the big screen really does help you. Now, the third one that's out there is a step up in hardware. Uh, it is, uh, it's called a Pad 2. Uh, it is a different tablet than the first two. Uh, it is ruggedized. It is waterproof, or I like to say moisture-proof. They say waterproof. Uh, and also dust-proof. So depending on the environment that you're using it in, uh, that may be something that you would want to look at as well. All three of which are all drop tested. You know, if you drop the thing on the floor, unless there's something sharp that hits the screen, uh, you should be just fine. There's no spinning hard drive in it. It's all solid state. Uh, now, when you go to the Pad 2, uh, which is the, the one with all the goodies, uh, that also has hardware expansions. Um, I don't see a lot of that usage on the collision side as of yet. Uh, but as example, you can expand that to not only be your scan tool, uh, but you can buy a lab scope module for it. You can buy a video camera for it, uh, for boroscope work, that sort of thing. Where the other two, there is no expansion in hardware capability as of now. So those are the three that are available. Again, first one, 8-inch, comes with two years of software. Next one up is 10-inch, uh, comes with one year of software, but basically is all the same operation. And then again, the Pad 2, uh, different tablet, uh, higher resolution screen, not that I think you really need it, all capacitive swipe screen, twice the hard drive space, and twice the RAM. So the machine is a little faster. Um, I'm not sure if you're going to really need the hard drive space difference unless you're saving every report you've ever done for the last forever because um, these things are all zipped so the reports take up very little space but if you wanted to use the tablet for other applications as well which i'm finding to be the case honestly um, you have plenty of hard drive space to be able to drop anything you want on the tool now, the tool itself, if you look at your computer screen, I actually, this is the face of the computer, of the, of the tool itself. Uh, and it is live. I'm going to interact with it. Uh, now, just as an example, if you look up at the very top of the machine, and I'm mentioning this only so you understand the ease of operation of this particular piece. Uh, now, if you look at the top left of the screen, uh, there's a little area there that says bin scan. Uh, what that does, if you have a vehicle, 
especially if it's a European vehicle, that's not the easiest thing in the world to connect with. Different chassis numbers, different body numbers. I mean, it's it's not always easy to just load it in. You can hit that VIN scan, and it will automatically pull the VIN out of the ECU and preload it for you. Um, in most cases, uh, any vehicle that has cans, uh, which is everything 08 forward, and some previous to that, but everything 08 forward, you should be able to pick it right up. So what you would do as a first step, let's say you wanted to do a uh, pre-collision uh, uh, pre scan, uh, you would do that, and when it loaded, you're going to get a menu. Now that menu, I'm going to go into demo here, and you're going to see that menu that will come up for you. The first thing is, it says demo on this, but if I had picked a particular manufacturer, bottom right, it just says confirm. I just touch that. And I'm in the vehicle. Now, you'll notice the first thing on that menu is health report. Uh, again, this is all about the insurance company. So if I just touch health report, again, no buttons. This is all touch capacitive screen. What it's doing is connecting with each of the computers on the vehicle. Now, any, and it's reading codes, obviously. Now, any module that has a code in it will come up red on the screen. And over to the right, as you can see, for example, the first one is the engine control module. It says fault four. That means that there's four trouble codes in that module. Next one is transmission. There's three trouble codes in that. Now, anything that is not clear, well, as I said, will come up red. If there's a module that has no codes in it, it will come up black, such as this battery management system, and it will say OK on the right side. Now, I have some options right here. If I wanted to clear these codes to see what went away and what stayed, uh, down near the bottom left, uh, it'll say clear DTC. If I hit that one module at a time, and I'm not going to do that in this demo, but one module at a time, it will put it in diagnostic mode, it will clear the code, and then immediately reread it. So it'll come right back up. Uh, if there's a, a trouble code that still has an open circuit or so forth. If it's a history code, it'll disappear and not come back. Uh, but in this case, we want to just do a, a fault report prior to repair. So if you look at the bottom right bar, it says fault report. If you just touch that, it's going to format this thing into a fault report. Now, down the bottom, there's a little uh, red tab there that says report. When I push that, it's going to give me the ability to add additional information. If I wanted, because it's using VIN right this minute as the fault name. So, I, a report name rather. So, I can put the owner's name in, license place number, uh, who the technician is, uh, or the writer that's uh, doing the test. And any remarks I may want uh, when I'm done with that. And again, all you have to do is touch the category and it will bring up a, a keyboard for you. So we get rid of the keyboard. I don't need to put anything in here right now. I'll just go to confirm. And then now it has formatted the, uh, the report itself. Uh, now, they, because it is a droid tablet, you have the ability to put in a header. Uh, as you'll notice, mine is, uh, says Medco University, gives the address, et cetera. And I even imported a, one of our logos as well. You can do this all the same. Put your shop information in there. If you've got a logo that you like to use, you can put that in there. And this is the report itself. I'm just scrolling up. Again, anything that has a, a code in it, any of the modules that have a code, it will give you in red and then list 
the coat itself. So this first one, for example, is a PO303, misfire on cylinder number three, uh, so on and so forth. So it lists all of those. Any of the modules that pass and don't have codes will come up in green, as you see right down below. Now, if I want to send this to somebody or I want to print it, if you look down the bottom of the screen on the left, it says print. That's not how you print, unfortunately. Uh, Launch has their own little thermal printer uh, that really is no good for this particular application. So if you look over to the right, there's a droid share button down at the bottom. So if you just touch that, it brings up your options. For example, if I wanted to print it, this is X obviously after I've downloaded a printer app. In this particular case, I use Hammer Mill. Now, I'm just going to hit OK. It's processing there, spooling the print now. Just taking forever. I'm a long way from my printer. That may be what it is. <clears throat> okay. Now, all again, if you look in the upper left, there's a blue bar that says print. Just hit the print button and out it comes. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you don't have to print these now. All of these are saved as you do them. If you did three or four in the morning, for example, and maybe it's approaching lunch, so you have a chance to actually sit, and maybe now you want to print. And I just stepped back two pages. If you look in the upper left, you'll see three bars. Uh, that is the droid symbol for menu. So if I just touch that and Sandy, scroll have, down to where, yes. Sandy, I have another question uh, just before you go on. Um, yeah? The gentleman asked, um, it says it gives a report. Is there a way to print an invoice with a dollar amount rather than a report? No. Okay. That would have to be done probably through your management system. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look in this main menu on the left, uh, if you look down near the bottom, there's a category that says profile. So I just hit the profile button. And then when this pops up, I just hit my report. And all the reports I just did recently are all here. So uh, all I have to do uh, to print it is just touch on the one that you want. The report pops up in front of you, as you see. Go to share and decide how you want to do it. You want to print it, you want to email it. However it is that you want to do it, you just pick that category and away you go. Now, all these reports are archived in that same place. They're in the profile. I'll do it one more time just so you can see it. Oops. Hit one more, two buttons. I got to pop back in there. Again, top left, go to the menu button, go to profile, go to my report, and there's all the reports I've done. Now, you can remove these if you wish. You'll notice there's a trash can at the bottom right. So if you wanted to remove one, you just highlight it, put your little box, and just go to the trash can. It's going to ask you if you want to do it. In this case, I do. Just hit confirm, and it's gone forever. <clears throat> so, again, you don't have to print or email it. At the time you do it, you can go back at your leisure and do it whenever you want or however you want. 
Now, I'm going to step back out of the health report. Now, this next in line, uh, instead of health report, this is system scan. If you wanted to do a quick scan of the entire car to be able to go into various modules, you would select that. Now, again, just like with the health report, it's giving you the ability to look at all of the uh, modules or computers that are in the car. And I think we all realize at this point that there's not a button, switch, or a knob on a car today that isn't tied to a computer. So this is really the only way you can access information. So, uh, for example, if I just pick this first one, engine control module, these are all the modules that it found. You'll notice on the right it says equipped. If you just touch on whatever module you want to go into, it brings up your diagnostic menu. This was one of the other reasons why we seriously look at launch uh, for the folks in the collision industry. Uh, I mean, we all realize that unlike the folks in the general repair side, they've got a scan tool in their hand every day. And that's not always the case on the collision side. So finding one with the easiest of interface <clears throat> really was a key. So in this particular case, this is the diagnostic menu for this module on this vehicle. Now you'll notice, and it's always laid out basically the same. It says read codes, clear codes, read data stream, that's your input data. Actuation tests, those are all your bi-directional tests. Uh, uh, you know, turning controls on and off, making windows go up and down, uh, turning your heat stuff on and off, uh, putting on ABS pumps, anything that you can control through the computer will be in that category. Uh, special functions, if the module has special functions, uh, you will find things in there that uh, where you may make an actual change like a learning, I just picked uh, throttle learning, uh, injector uh, ID writing, etc. cetera. Um, now, some programming function, I get that question every day, <clears throat> depending on the module and the vehicle manufacturer. I'm just popping this open. There are some modules that you can actually program right through the tool. Uh, there are other modules you can't. Uh, uh, probably a good example uh, is the fact uh, that most of the modules you'll see that you can program are modules that don't require uh, ongoing uh, updates, uh, such as an engine control module where they're doing calibration changes all the time. Uh, you know, a module like an ABS module, for example, generally there's little to no changes made. So those calibrations are built right into this program. Um, this is, I'm going to go to end session because it's just faking it anyway. So again, from that menu, not only do you have all of the systems available to you, where you could go to ABS, you could go to airbag, you could go to body control or instrument cluster, et cetera. And you can do it all right from that page. Or you can choose, I'm gonna back up one page, to go to system selection. So if I go to system selection, well, let's say I'm dealing with an airbag issue. Uh, so I would just pick SRS rather than going anywhere else. Read codes, clear codes, and read data stream. SRS doesn't allow you, thank God, uh, to interact with the system in any bi-directional control. So they don't want anybody blowing a bag off in your face. <laughs> uh, I can picture that happening. Actually, I have seen it happen. So, but for example, if I went to steering, 
read, clear, special functions. Uh, that would be steering angle reset, that sort of thing. Uh, now, you will find with this particular series of tools, uh, this probably has more bi-directional control and special function, especially on your smaller vehicle groups than any tool I've had in my hand. And I use them all. I mean, it's my job to use them all. So I have a pretty fair idea about what manufacturer in terms of the tools will do what. Uh, and honestly, in the aftermarket, this is as comprehensive as there is. <clears throat> so that's your basic interaction with the tool itself. Uh, again, just to kind of reiterate, uh, it will generally work on just about everything that rolls into your shop. Uh, for the most part, we'll have, and again, it's all three units, uh, we'll have uh, the majority of your special functions and activations and the ability, obviously, to read and clear codes. Uh, all the code numbers and code descriptions uh, that you'll see are all factory or OEM codes, uh, either that or federal. And the descriptions that you have are OEM descriptions. So whatever diagnostic information you may be using, all of those descriptions will match. Um, you know, if you're using an information system like All Data or Mitchell's or Identifix, uh, which is becoming honestly more the case in the, the folks in the body shop world than it ever has been. Um, you know, people are dealing with issues now, as again, as I just said a few moments ago, there's not a button or a switch anywhere in that car that's not tied to a computer. So I having have another question. Yeah? I'm sorry, I, I have another question for you. Um, what are the major differences between using aftermarket versus OEM scan tool? And what am I not uh, getting by using the aftermarket? For the most part, uh, and I, I can't say it specifically, uh, but for the most part, um, programming is probably the biggest difference. Uh, although this particular tool does have some programming capability, it doesn't have it all. Uh, whereas your OEM platforms like a Ford IDS or, uh, you know, like a GM Tech Wind. Uh, whatever the OEM platform is that you're using, there is going to be additional functionality in those areas that you're not going to see in the aftermarket. Um, I'm going to tell you that this has more functionality than most. Uh, your major players out there, uh, obviously launch. Uh, Autel is another uh, offshore product. Uh, that actually works very well. It's a very similar uh, operating platform to this. Uh, it is droid-based. Their engineering platform uh, is almost identical in the way that they actually do the reverse engineering. Uh, the third one out there that's uh, a major is Bosch or Bosch slash OTC. <coughs> Both of the, I mean, those are the two tools they have are uh, Android as well. Uh, the difference is, is in the engineering platform. For the most part, what's in the Bosch slash OTC tool uh, is packages that they have bought from the OEM. They buy data packages, they buy control packages. Um, the problem is, they can't buy everything. So in many cases, not in all, but in many cases, you won't get all the same test procedures in that platform or even the same amount of data available because they're limited to what the OEM may actually sell them to put in the tool. And once they bought those data packages or control packages, they format them to their own operating platform, uh, in addition to which it's two to three years behind in many cases, like the uh, European I had mentioned. Uh, for example, you know, both OTC pieces right now 
the European stuff only goes up through 2014, where both the launch and the auto, uh, most of which is up in the 17 range. Um, again, that has less importance uh, relative to the uh, general repair guy, but on the collision side, again, you have no idea what year vehicle that you're going to see on the general repair side. Um, you know, the car is going to be in warranty for a couple of years anyway, so it becomes less an issue with those folks. Uh, but again, with the collision side, you got a problem if you can't get on a, a later model vehicle. And I realize, I mean, you're probably going to see some 2018s, and that engineering's not done yet. It's a, a horrendous task. Uh, they have literally rooms full of engineers uh, doing all these calibrations. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of single calibrations in these tools. Uh, so it takes a tremendous amount of time and manpower to engineer this. Uh, and I have to say, it's the Autel and the launch that are, are really steamrolling with it. What was I that? One more question. I have one more question here. Mm -hmm. um, so is there any difference from aftermarket to OEM in terms of data generated by the scan? Example, will both tools provide a full diagnosis and OEM may provide more tools to address the fault codes relative to the aftermarket? Well, generally speaking, the OEM tools, uh, I'll just pick, uh, uh, say, GM right now. If you had a GM MDI system with a TechWin, uh, as part of that package, you get service information. So you're paying a subscription to have it, of course, and you have the hardware. <laughs> In that particular case, it's all PC-based, but uh, but as part of that package, you would have available the actually diagnostic information. But if anybody out there thinks they want to buy all OEM software and then try to learn it all, oof, that's uh, that can be tough. Uh, you know, I mean, if you're doing uh, work for, say, a series of dealers, uh, maybe it's an Audi dealer, maybe it's a series of uh, GM dealers or Nissan or whoever it is, uh, then you may want to consider that relative to that volume you're dealing with. Uh, but by and large, I have found with, uh, in most collision situations, uh, your deal, one, this health report is, has really come to the surface as importance. And two, uh, I haven't found by and large, uh, that the folks in the collision industry want to get into really heavy diagnostics. You know, if you unplug a seat and you've got to do a zero point calibration to make the light go out before you can ship this thing out the door, if you have a scan tool like this, it's a two minute process. Otherwise, you've got to either wait for someone to come in and handle it for you, or you've got to ship the vehicle out. Uh, to an off-site location uh, and have someone else handle it. That means you either got to tow it maybe or two guys to take it there, two guys to pick it up, stretching your cycle of time out another day or two. Uh, there's a lot of factors involved. Um, I find in speaking with folks in the collision industry, because uh, I'm at this point, I'm in body shops with this every single day. Um, most everybody's concern is the, the ability to, uh, one, do the health report, obviously, but easily handle stuff that is routine to them. You know, if you rip a wheel off and you've got to deal with an ABS issue, that'll do this. Or if you've got a bleed situation you can't through, this will do an automated bleed in most cases. Or, again, like you have a, uh, you know, a seatbelt blown. Uh, it's going to guide you to which one is blown so you know which the replacement is. Or if you've got a seat buckle grounding issue, you'll be able to look at that data and actuate it. Um, 
you know, there's a lot of hundreds of thousands of, of functionalities like that that you can do with this tool. Uh, you know, there is a little learning curve on the part of the user, of course. <laughs> but again, one of the reasons why we selected this was the ease of the menuing. Um, I really felt that was important. Uh, you know, you may have this in your hand and put it down, and you may not pick it up for two or three weeks. Nobody wants to try to think their way through the use of the product again. Uh, so in that, it does have pretty much a standard operating platform. Uh, that was really one of the important measures that we used in picking this product for presentation. So there you go. Do we uh, do we have any questions at this point? Uh, does anybody have any more questions? Uh, Sandy would be happy to answer them. Um, and just to let everybody know on the call, I um, I'll send. I'll get that list of OEs that require pre and post scans from Sandy, and I'll send it to everybody on the call. And for all the shops on the call, you can follow up with your distributors if you're interested in purchasing the launch scan tool. Um, and I will send Sandy's contact information if you have specific questions about the use of the tool. So we'll follow up with that as well. Um, I don't see any more questions, so I, I think you answered um, the ones we did receive. And um, I think that wraps it up. And uh, we really appreciate everybody participating. And we'll be in touch with future uh, training opportunities. Sandy, thank you. And uh, again, we'll follow up and get everybody your information. All right? Thank you. All right. Thanks very much.